If you're struggling on steep gradients or planning on riding in some really hilly terrain, then it's a good idea to change your gears and make them easier. And the simplest way to do that is to swap out your rear cassette. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Firstly, here are the essential tools you'll need for the job. A lock ring tool or cassette lock ring to remove your cassette, and also a wrench that you can use to grab hold of it. You'll next need a chain whip, which is also used to remove the cassette, a chain breaker to trim the new chain down to the correct size and potentially remove your existing chain, or if you're using a quick link, quick link pliers. You'll also need some Allen keys if you're going to adjust your rear derailleur. Now for step-by-step -step walkthrough guides on this maintenance job and many others, I'd highly recommend the GCN Essential Road Bike Maintenance book, which is available from shop.globalcyclingnetwork. Now the first step on this job is to assess what your options are and work out how big a cassette you can fit to your specific rear derailleur. Now I've got a SRAM Red Access uh, rear mech here and that's rated up to a maximum of 33 teeth on the biggest cog. So that is what I'm gonna go to. SRAM does make a different model of this same rear derailleur, which can actually go up to a 36 tooth rear sprocket. And the exact amount of teeth you'll be able to go up will depend on your exact rear mech. So Shimano Ultegra tend to go up to say, 30 tooth, but they do make a longer cage option, which is rated up to 34 tooth. So just sort of factor that in. And there are too many different permutations of different rear mechs to go through them all in this single video. So I would suggest you look online and see what your particular rear derailleur can handle um, as this information is readily available online. Shimano Ultegra is pretty common. That tends to go up to 30 tooth, but if you get the longer cage option of that rear mech, you can go up to 34 tooth. And the other thing to bear in mind is that if you're running older drivetrains, often they accommodated less gear range. There's been a trend for newer drivetrains to accommodate much bigger gears. And so it may be worth upgrading and changing your rear derailleur um, altogether. Step two is to remove your rear wheel and cassette. Now, to do this, the easiest thing to do is to pop the chain down onto the smallest sprocket of the cassette. And I find generally jobs like this are done best in a work stand, although a work stand is not essential. To remove your cassette, take your chain whip and wrap it around the cassette. Take your lock ring tool and place it inside the lock ring of the cassette. Holding the cassette still with the chain whip, you want to turn the lock ring anti-clockwise to loosen it. You will feel a bit of resistance at first and then it'll just go. With the lock ring undone, you can simply remove your cassette. This is a SRAM 12-speed XDR cassette and so the lock ring is sort of integrated into the cassette body and it's a nice single piece. But if you're using an older 11-speed SRAM cassette or a Shimano uh, cassette, it has a separate lock ring which detaches away from the cassette to hold everything in place. With your cassette removed, it's then a good opportunity to clean or service your free hub body if it needs doing. I actually did this not so long ago, so I can see that my blue park tool grease on there is still blue, it's not turned black and horrible yet, so I'm just gonna go on straight away. And when you put your cassette on, you'll find that on a tapered spline, it will only be able to go on in a certain way. This is a SRAM uh, Force 12 speed cassette, and the nice thing is it's a one single piece, which means installation of it is super, super easy. But if you do have cassettes that break into individual sprockets, make sure you get them on the right way round and in the right order. With your new bigger cassette mounted, before you tighten it up, take your lock ring tool and just insert it, and then just do it by hand to begin with. This ensures that you don't cross thread the lock ring. Um, sometimes people go in with all the force and the wrench straight away, and it does cross thread it, so just be careful. Next, use your wrench to properly tighten the cassette onto the free hub body and use the recommended torque to finish it. You can use a torque wrench to do this, so you get it to the recommended tightness. And before you start commenting away, this cassette is clean. It might not look clean, but that's because it's a black one that's been used and so some of the paints come off, but I have cleaned it. 
and it hasn't got dirt and grime on it. I'm now going to install it back into the bike. With your new cassette installed on your bike, you'll often find that it does still work with your existing chain. And if you're in a real pinch or if you're changing a wheel in a race, you can sort of get away with it. However, if your existing chain was the correct length, then now with this bigger cassette in, it will be ever so slightly too short. And so we'd always recommend for optimum shifting, you also change your chain. But fear not, you can keep hold of this chain, put it somewhere safe, because when you switch back to smaller gears, you've got a chain that's ready to go on that smaller geared setup so your chain won't be too long. To remove your chain, if you don't have a quick link, you'll need a chain breaker tool, or if you've got a quick link, use some quick link pliers. Simply get the quick link on the chain, put the pliers around the quick link, pinch them, and it'll open it. With your chain off, it's a good opportunity to check the correct setup and alignment of your rear derailleur. So what you're looking at are the two limit screws, the high and the low limits. These should be set so that the jockey wheels are perfectly in line when it's at the low limit with the smallest sprocket and then the high limit should be perfectly in line with the biggest sprocket, which may be different now that you've changed your cassette. Also, I can see that when I'm in my highest gear now, High limit's a little bit too far across. I'm actually catching the, the rear derailleur on these spokes, which could be disastrous when I'm riding. So I'm going to adjust that first. Yep. With the rear derailleur in the highest position, check the B limit screw adjustment. When you fit bigger sprockets, this may need adjusting to provide greater clearance for the upper jockey wheel and the biggest sprocket on the cassette. Next, you're going to fit your new chain, and I'd always recommend going for one that comes with a quick link because it's much more convenient. Now, to size the new chain and make sure that it's the correct length, there are a variety of different methods you can use. However, the one that I'm the biggest fan of is the Sheldon Brown method, and this is how you do it. So, you take your chain and you just feed it around the biggest sprocket on the cassette. You don't feed it through the rear derailleur yet. So you take your new chain and you feed it around the largest sprocket on your cassette and then the largest chain ring that you have at the front. What you don't do is feed it through the rear derailleur. So with that in place, what you then do is you pull it tight around the sprockets over onto the front chain ring and what we're looking to do is to have one complete link overlapping. But because we're using a quick link, that includes the quick link two, which means the quick link will replace this link in the chain. So we want to break our chain one link back here. To trim the chain to its correct length, simply place the chain at the point you've identified in the chain breaker tool, tighten it and it will push the pin out. Just continue to tighten it all the way. Feel a slight click and the pin will be removed. I'm now going to thread the chain through the rear derailleur and connect it up with the quick link. One thing to be aware of is that many chains, including SRAM and Shimano, are directional. So make sure you get them on the right way around before you do them up with the quick link. To close the quick link, quick link pliers in the reverse direction come in real handy. With everything fitted in place, it's now time to just go through your gears. Best done with the bike in the stand and check that everything is shifting properly and as it should and that you're able to get into the extremities of the cassette. If you're still having problems and your gears need further adjustment at this stage, the best thing I would suggest is to consult specific videos that we have on gear adjustment and many more.